In this video, we're going to look at the conducting emission of a cascaded configuration of switchable power supplies. This is a typical benchtop conducting emission test setup, um, sort of the automotive, avionics, and defense people often do. We have the power supply, we have two DC lesions, we have uh, the circuit, we have the receiver, right? And the way I do it, right, in order to have a fair comparison, is that we have a isolated flyback converter here taking power from 12 volts and the output is actually also 12 volts and this is a non-isolated DC-DC converter, buck converter the input is 12 volts and the output is 5 volts and as you can see we just power it using a small resistor so this is of course the cascaded configuration each converter has its own conducting emission so we'll benchmark those conducting emission individually, then we connect it together and then do a emission test. In order to have a fair comparison, what we'll do is that we're going to connect this bug converter directly to DC-DC and then simply measure the conducting emission. And then for the isolated flyback converter, we, what we're going to do is set up a load and the load has no emissions at all and then we tune the load so that the power draw or the current draw from the power supply equals to the power draw in this configuration then we compare so that's the plan it is worth mentioning that in this case we're going to use CISPR 25 which is an automotive conducting emission standard and we just perform peak scan okay to keep it simple so the scan will start from 150 kilohertz all the way to about 110 megahertz. The resolution bandwidth between 150k to 30 megahertz is 9 kilohertz. Then from 30 megahertz to hundreds of megahertz, that will be 120 kilohertz as the resolution bandwidth. We have a transient suppressor there, so the results uh, will have some offset, but it's compensated in the receiver. So without further ado, let's start doing some tests. This is the load we're going to use and we're going to tune the load so that the power draw is the same as this one. We of course uh, need to test this DC-DC bug converter by its own. As you can see here, we have the bug converter by itself and also the flyback converter by itself. You probably can notice that the noise floor actually has about 10 dB difference. This is because when I was testing the buck converter by itself, in this case the green trace, the noise level is quite high, so um, it gives me the overload, so I have to increase the attenuation. Uh, so we used extra 10 dB attenuation in this case. That explains the noise floor shift. Uh, but other than that, as you can see, the buck converter definitely has a lot more noise compared to the flyback converter and you can see also their switching frequency actually is pretty close but given 9 kilohertz resolution bandwidth in the lower frequency range we can still quite easily distinguish the uh, switching frequency between the buck and flyback so now the question is when you cascade these two converters are you expecting to see something that the emissions change or it is pretty much the same as the flyback converter because the reason I ask is if you watch our previous video you probably get some idea and also don't forget in this case because of the setup we are actually measuring the conducting emission and the first converter connected to the lizards is the uh, flyback converter so it's a quite good question so let's have a look yeah as we probably had already guessed the cascaded results right in the lower frequency range is pretty much just the same as the flyback converter so if you look at it, it aligns with the blue trace quite well right up to the frequency to about the 50 megahertz this is the 30 40 50 megahertz right now from 50 megahertz you can now see in the higher frequency range the cascaded um, configuration actually has a lot more emissions compared to the flyback converter by itself. It looks like 
in this frequency range, the noise from the bulk converter really start to penetrate through the flyback converter. You know, the flyback converter has some filters right on the front end, but it seems like those filters cannot stop RF noise generated from the, the bulk converter. And then we can definitely see the increase of noise from 40, 30 megahertz, um, and it's pretty much aligned with the bulk converter in this case. How about higher power? Let's compare when we increase the load current. This is the result when we increase the load current. And again, the trend is pretty much the same. Below 30 megahertz, the cascade configuration has a similar emission profile uh, compared with uh, the flyback converter by itself. But above 30 megahertz, when the frequency starts to increase, it aligns more to the bulk converter. Even the resonance here, you can see, uh, is not exactly the same resonance point, but does show similar profile uh, as the bulk converter. Interestingly, in my opinion, is that even though the fact that as we increase the load current, we definitely see an increase the emissions from the bulk converter, this noise actually is not even showing in the cascaded uh, configuration. Uh, it looks like it cannot simply penetrate through the flatback converter. If you do a good power distribution network, you're going to have high voltage to 12 volts, 12 volts to 5 volts, 5 volts to 3.3 volts. It, perhaps the finding in this study gives you an insight on how to design a filter, right? I often get questions, they say, shall I also design a good filter for my secondary or third uh, switching power supply? Perhaps this finding will then give you some insight. If you like this video, please give us some feedback and I'll see you next time.